Welcome everyone to episode six of Be In Field. Coming up on today's episode, we have two special guests. First time we've had two here in studio. We're going to have Aaron Blaney and Emma Conley, who's also Emma Blaney formally. Uh, they're going to be joining us as Ryan Blaney's two sisters. So we're going to go behind behind the glass case of Ryan Blaney. <laughs> Learn all about him as a child and just what it was like with their dad racing. I yep. think it's going to be a great episode. It will be. Uh, okay, so we also have to talk about Martinsville. Uh, Sam, you took some photos on social media that were some of the prettiest photos. Thank you. you guys weren't in Martinsville for these. No, so this is actually Primland, um, and it's a resort about 45, 50 miles from Martinsville. It's actually cool, a lot of people staying there were going to the race later. Um, and so we went up there and we had just like a little us get away, uh, Brexton stayed home with our parents, and this was really cool. Um, so a lot of people are like, oh my God, you bring a photographer with you. <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah. No. No. Um, no, it's just an iPhone and Kyle has an Apple Watch and so you can kind of sync them and so we set it up on the back deck and then we went out and that's, that's where our little cottage overlooked. So it was really cool. We went golfing, uh, hiking, we went shooting. Um, what I posted, I probably only hit the clay things like four times. But yeah, don't tell people that. I put the good one on Don't tell media, people that. So. so I went to visit one of my really good friends, Emily, who just moved to LA. She moved back a couple of months ago. So I have never been to LA. Um, I've been to the West Coast, but never actually to LA and Beverly Hills and all the fun stuff. So you I went there. So cool. uh, it was Rodeo, which was the prettiest yeah. ever. But I just basically did all the tourist things. I made her take me to Malibu. Um, we had some really good restaurants. I love North Carolina and the East Coast, but man, we got to step our food game up because LA's yeah, got it. LA's got it going on. Amazing food out so there. So I, I ate my way through the West Coast. Is basically I, what I did. Good. Uh, another storyline coming out of Martinsville besides our photos, and uh, there was a little scuffle. A lot of drama. Hey, 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 hey. Stop! Stop! Because I mean, it's a short track, which yeah. is what's to be expected. I thought it was a little tame. Well, actually, I felt like it was tame in the beginning of the race, and then right towards the end, it was yeah. just like. Phew. So the scuffle that we're referring to, if you live under a rock, uh, Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano might not be hanging out anytime no, soon. Not so much. And I will say this. Okay. My biggest problem with what happened mm -hmm. was when all the crew guys jump in. Yeah. I feel like it needs to be like hockey where, I don't know, if the drivers want to have it out, that's on them. An official needs to step in because what was kind of crazy is if you saw all the videos, somebody grabbed Denny and started pulling him to the ground and his guy kind of caught his arm. But if his guy hadn't caught his arm, I feel like he would have whacked his head on the concrete mm -hmm. and that would have been disastrous. So I feel like... You know, sometimes the fights are great for the sport, but let's let the drivers have it out. Because also, too, I mean, some of the crew guys are, like, way bigger. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just not, like, a fair – like, let's just let them handle it. Yeah, I agree with that. I think it should be driver on driver. Yeah, and then let the official – Or crew guy. If crews, if crew guys want to go fight somewhere else or right. want to go fight right to the side, sure, go – because then the other Do problem that. becomes, too, I'm if also your scared crew of fights, so. isn't down there quick enough, it could be, like, 12 against one or two. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I just feel like that's somewhere where the officials just need to step in and kind of be, like, the refs, just like in hockey. But So we're not going to go on a double date with Denny and Joey anytime soon. We're also not going to go on a double date with Kyle and Eric. Uh, or because, Newman. <laughs> or Newman, yeah. So we have uh, some, some, some tweets and some quotes that went out, but... You know what? It's Martinsville. I mean, Rubin's racing. And what here's Kyle the thing. always tells me. <laughs> like, it's the playoffs. You're trying to go for every point that you can. You're trying to make it to the next round. So, yeah. I mean, it happened all over the track all day, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. Good racing. So now we get to head to Texas, which is going to be really fun. Uh, I was excited that Martinsville was the first race. Yeah. So, so. head to Texas. I mean, there's. I mean, it's crazy. People are like, oh, you know, Kyle and Denny, they're above the cut line. They're fine. But look at what happened to Brad. I know. So yeah. I would say. It's true. It's definitely a lot of pressure. That's true. All right, well, now let's get into one of our favorite segments, the catch. 
All right, so Catch Fence is our weekly roundup of social media things that happened that Sam and I found interesting. So last week we had Sherry on, uh, who's one of my favorites too, but Martin actually it. won yep. the race. So Martin. Sherry, it's a good luck. You need to come on our show more. Hey, maybe we'll get more guests because of it. Yeah, <laughs> all, all the drivers, wives and girlfriends come on the show because they may win. Right, and then here they are, obviously in victory lane with the grandfather clock. That's so one of the coolest trophies on the circuit. Truex has wanted that one for a really long time. Yeah. So Sherry, you get to take that home yeah. now. And this was Cole Pern's photo. This yep. has become a tradition, which is really cool. Um, but they take, it's the whole crew, they take like their number of wins, fingers, picture. Selfie, um, yep. So Cole Pern's whole Instagram page is basically these photos because I mean, that's seven, seven wins. Yeah, yeah that's so. really cool. And like we talked about before, it's really, you know, everybody focuses on the driver or then the crew chief, but it's the teams. And mm -hmm. they are in the shop nonstop working so hard. So yeah. I love seeing stuff like this. All right, next we have Caitlin, who was also a guest on You're the show. You're also welcome, Blake, because uh, you come on our show, you win. She stayed up till 2, 3 in the morning, mm -hmm. she said, just to wait up for Blake and surprise him with this really delicious looking cookie cake. And she lit the candle. Good I wifey. Know, that was. That was awesome. Uh, next up, Matt Tiff, who we have to talk about this too, because I am so glad that it wasn't checked out to be okay as far as his That's brain tumor scary. and stuff but he did have a seizure wasn't able to compete he will be out the remainder of the season um john hunter nemechek is stepping in hey everybody i uh, just been getting all of your messages and uh, wanted to give you an update of everything that happened this weekend so um, obviously those who saw i was not able to partake in the race on sunday at martinsville uh, I actually arrived on Saturday morning and um, I went into the hauler. I was getting ready for the rookie meeting, I was making my morning coffee and I uh, felt my tongue cramp up and um, next thing I knew I, I blacked out and uh, my crew guys uh, helped me down and, and had EMTs and the next thing I knew I woke up in the, uh, um, in the ambulance there getting transported to a local hospital and uh, so I was actually out of the race uh, because I suffered uh, a seizure this weekend. Um, Luckily, my test results uh, with a CT scan and my MRI uh, today on, on Monday showed that uh, there was there's nothing there as far as my brain tumor. So trying to find out some answers of uh, what exactly is going on. He mentions in the video that they're going to do some more tests to try to get to the bottom of mm -hmm. it because, yeah, scary. But, but we're praying for you. Yep. We're thinking about you, Matt. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is my spirit animal. You don't eat fast food, do you? I do. Okay. Like, not a lot, but okay. I do. <laughs> so I love fast food. Chick-fil-A, I don't really count as fast food, but it Dude, is. that's healthy. So I eat Chick-fil-A. Yes. That's the Lord's food. Yes. And Kyle yeah. loves, like, Taco Bell and RV. Okay, so, so Taco Bell is my favorite, and McDonald's is my favorite. This is Clint Boyer after Martinsville had a terrible day at Martinsville. He tweeted, like, something like, or Instagram, this is worse, getting worse as the night goes on. Uh, no, I think that's an improvement. Well, what's funny is that he said this is his dinner because of a terrible finish, but, like, when we win, we are at Arby's or this Taco This is my Bell, dream. So. This is my dream date would be Taco Bell or McDonald's <laughs> drive through. So. I'm trying to think what we got on the way home. We got Wendy's. That mm. was our stop after Martinsville. What's your McDonald's order? Do you ever eat McDonald's? It's not my favorite. I don't oh. eat red meat, so. I'm a Big Mac kind of girl, large fry, large sweet tea. I know. Oh, God, you and your sweet tea. <laughs> I know. I learned that the other day when I took a big old sip of it, and it was sweet tea. Yeah, I grew no, up in Chicago. That was no not iced tea around here. a thing. Um, okay, up next we have William Byron, who finished second. Super impressive mm -hmm. run. Um, I was watching Chad on, I think, Race Hub, and he was saying that this is one that they had circled. They didn't think it was going to be great for them, and he was right up there contending for the win. What it I was. also loved was in his interview, they said, if you had gotten closer, would you have gone for the win? And he said, no, I would have raced him clean and tried to get it, but I wouldn't have taken him out. So. Which is good because Willie B is unfortunately not in the playoffs anymore, so right. but can't take a playoff driver out. Next up, we have Austin Dillon, who clearly went fishing. I <laughs> That's am, a massive fish. I don't know what kind of fish that is, but it nope. looks like a nice day out on the water. And, you know, drivers need to get away. They need to relax. They, they need to have yep. that downtime, too. That's he and his dad. Yep. Um, so they – that thing is huge. I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I don't know if that, if that has to be the same one, right? I don't know what it is, but I don't okay. know if they eat or not. Oh. Uh, okay, so Amy Earnhardt actually put this out. She's gotten so big. I know. Look at the little skirt. Uh, so pumpkin patches are my favorite things in the world. It's even cuter when a kid is there. Um, oh, God, that's so cute. Look at that outfit. I love oh, it. and her shirt says Haunt Miss. 
She is so cute. I mean, I feel Ella like so she cute. dresses her adorable. They're always out and doing something. And yeah, the Aww. pumpkin patch of kids is the greatest. They are so excited mm-hmm. and she looks adorable. She does look really I cute. I want a girl one day just to dress her up like that. I know. <laughs> They're like built-in baby dolls. I know. The shirt says haunt mess. Yeah, it That does. is the best. Where do we get adult sizes of the <laughs> haunt mess shirt? Okay, this was really cool. Jeff Gordon is cooler than we are. He was hanging out with Diplo. Um, this is him in the Hendrix shop showing him around and then Diplo was in Charlotte that I is think. such a cool picture I don't know if this is Charlotte maybe they weren't in Charlotte they're somewhere but he got on stage I mean that's uh, awesome like you're on stage with Diplo Jeff I love Gordon, that. in his hat and his yeah. cool shoes but it's Jeff Jeff's cool yeah he's cooler than we are for sure cooler than we are all right so now we're going to get into studio with our two guests coming up and you might recognize them by Ryan Blaney's sisters but we're excited to hear their side of the story We are joined by Emma and Erin. Emma lives in West Virginia now, married to Kill Conley with a 10-month-old, almost, named Louie, who was named after their grandfather, Lou Blaney. Emma owns a clothing boutique in Marietta. Erin just graduated from the University of Alabama, now lives in Concord, North Carolina, and manages operations for the nonprofit foundation, the Ryan Blaney Family Foundation. Uh, first, I have to start. We have a Clemson Tiger and an Alabama Crimson Tide <laughs> on the same stage, and we're not fighting, so it's going to be a good day. We've already talked about this, but... <laughs> yeah. We yeah. respect it. Well, she we appreciate you guys being guys. here. A lot of folks know you guys as just Ryan's Ryan sisters, sisters mm-hmm. but you guys have a lot going on. So let's talk about your life, what's going on, what's been happening outside of the racetrack. You start. You're Me? older. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> You're older. Well, <laughs> I'm older. Yeah, let's get that Thanks. first. So Emma's the oldest, then Ryan's yeah, then Ryan. the middle, yeah. then Aaron's the youngest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're all like three years apart, almost exactly. So mm. that was like the perfect age gap. But yeah, I am. Um, I actually live in West Virginia now. Um, <laughs> I miss home so much. I, I, whenever, whenever I come back, I just, oh, I love it here so much. But um, my when husband, Kale. you guys Kale, were dating, you lived right, or Kale lived yeah, right by my parents. We were neighbors with yep. our parents when we lived in Davidson. I know, I miss them. I miss that. Oh, I miss them. But, um, yeah, we moved. Kale's from West Virginia. Really big. I was just about to ask yeah, why West Virginia. Yeah, but. real big. He has a big, big family. They all um, live there, his nephews. So I knew if we were going to get married, I'd have to get my butt there. Mm-hmm. So um, about two years ago, we did. Um, got engaged, built a house. Or not build a house, shit. We're not that, like, <laughs> mm, bought a house. <laughs> bought a house. <laughs> and um, we actually were going to get married. And then I got pregnant, and so we moved up our wedding really a couple months and got it married. It was going to happen had, eventually. Yeah, yeah you know what? It all it worked yeah. out just fine. Everything was perfect. And, and Louis um, the cutest. So yeah, he's so the cute. best. He was on our show already, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's made it a couple times. Yeah, he is just he's the. I mean, we always say our second kid. Oh, he it's something bad. He's going to be a little hellion or something because Louis's too good to be true right now. So we're waiting for. SHIT to hit the fan yeah. at one point. So, um, but yeah, he's almost 10 months and uh, my husband races sprint cars. So I feel like I'm still like in the racing game a little bit mm-hmm. and I try to get to Ryan's as much. And my dad and Kale race together a lot this year. So that was kind of nice because my mom, I'd see her and dad all the time. Um, but yeah, coming home, it just needs to happen more often. But I'm just trying to get used to being away. the mom. Yeah, away and being a mom and trying to keep a business kind of going. How is it going? It's good. It's good. You know, Marietta, so I actually live in West Virginia, and we live right on the border of Ohio. So um, the store is actually in a little town called Marietta, and it's really small, but it's people take that shop small right there super serious. It's kind of like Davidson's Yes. Okay. Yeah, a little bit. Um, but they do. They Everyone that lives there takes you very serious. And, you know, there's not a lot of, like, shopping malls where we are. And so we're kind of one of the only – clothing places around there, boutique style. There's a couple others, but um, so it's going really good. And I have a good group of girls that work with me, which, I mean, you know, like that's a big thing to try to find girls that you trust and like. And so it's all going good. So I'm just adjusting to kind of the new, but I love coming home. Um, I've had dreams of like quitting the store and spending like half (laughs) my weeks here and the other half at home with (laughs) you. But I don't know how that would work out. But but yeah, so it's good. Aaron's Your turn. Um, well, I, like you said, just graduated from Alabama and loved Alabama, the school. Alabama as a state, I didn't <laughs> think I could live there. 
love you guys, but I, I knew I loved North Carolina, and I knew I loved having family here and everyone close by. It was a little sad when she moved away, but I guess that's what happens. You get married and you have to, yeah, I guess you know, life. grow up. Yeah. I guess that's life. Change. He can have you. That's fine. <laughs> every now, you got to come back every now and then, though. Yeah. And then, so I knew I wanted to come back here, and kind of back in December, Ryan decided he wanted to start a nonprofit foundation, and so um, that's kind of like what I was studying in college anyway, and he knew that I had an interest in that, and so he asked me to run it when I came home, and so um, me and my mom kind of co-run his foundation. It's kind of brand new, um, but it's taken off pretty well. Mm -hmm. We've done a few projects already. What is it? Tell the um, Alzheimer's disease, because that's kind of the family thing. It's our grandfather, our grandfather who kind of started the whole racing in the Blaney family, um, got diagnosed with it, and then lived with it for probably five or more years um, and was still fairly active when he had it um, and then passed away a, a little over 10 years ago. And so ever since then, we've just always had a, a love for trying to like care for people with Alzheimer's and doing things to give donations to them. And so it just seemed to fit, you know? And so, and Ryan's so family oriented and we all are. And that's the coolest thing about it is- We are um, a very close yeah. family. Mm -hmm. We are, you know, um, we were kind of always that way growing up, I think we always, wanted to do things together and not, like we, we mess with each other, you know, but we're all just super, super close and that kind of. Yeah, well, and you're, you're kind of forced to kind of in the lifestyle that you yeah. grow up in, you mm -hmm. know, my dad raced and so my mom took care of three kids who all did different stuff. Like I played high school sports, Ryan raced, she did gymnastics and mo my mom like took care of that all. So we were forced to go sit at her gymnastics meets together and then pack up and go to Brian's races mm -hmm. somewhere or to go drop, you know, like my mom always made sure like, these are your most important people all the time. These are the people who are always gonna be there. Yeah. So I, that's just, I feel like it just stuck with us. And yeah. we did, I mean, every everybody went to everything, everyone's yeah. little thing that Definitely. we had. And we didn't grow up in Charlotte. Well, we were all born in Ohio. We moved over here when I was about one. So most of our childhood was in North Carolina, but it was kind of in, and it was in High Point, which is, pretty north of here. Yeah. And my mom kind of did that on purpose because obviously she wanted us to stay really close and my dad had just started in, um, in NASCAR and but she didn't want that to be our whole lives. Yeah. You yeah, know? Did you guys travel with him a lot or a, just sometimes? A little bit. I mean, dad started later. I, I feel like now everyone's so young. You know, my yeah. dad when he started, I think he was pretty young for then but it's not young now. It's you know, he had same. three mm -hmm. kids and so we were kind of all, we were in school by then. Um, and like what she said, my mom's biggest thing was she knew that racing could be done no matter, like, yeah. and you know, and so she didn't want our lives to be so revolved around racing. That's why we stayed in High Point and didn't move closer to, you know, where yeah. dad would have to go to work every day or anything. Um, but I think that's why she kept us there because she wanted us to have a life outside of racing. You know, if, if for some reason racing was over and all of our friends were just friends at the racetrack. Right. Yeah. It she couldn't change. take us away mm -hmm. from that, you know? And so um, being older and now being a mom, I, you know, respect and see everything, everything that my mom did, everything yeah. I hated her for yeah. when I was a teenager and we fought about, it just, it's so eye-opening once you become a mom or just become older, more mature. Mm -hmm. I said mm -hmm. that last week on our episode. I was like, my mom is, she was right about everything. Oh, everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everything yeah. that Absolutely. I thought her yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. To learn yes. that, but yeah, mm -hmm. they're always right. Well, always. Mom, you were right. Yeah. Thanks, mom. Yeah. I'll admit it. I'll so, did it. you guys ever consider getting in the racing world? I know a lot of, a lot, of, especially now, younger girls. We yeah. have Haley Deegan and yeah. mm -hmm. Natalie Decker and all the girls that are getting into racing. Was there ever a time where you guys might have wanted to step into a car? Funny that you say that because we we grew up in High Point. We were. Our dad's race shop was in Salisbury, which is right next to NCQ May, that mm -hmm. quarter midget track. Yep. So growing up, me, her, and Ryan were all put in quarter midgets. And mm -hmm. so I don't know how you, how old you were when you mm -hmm. did it, but I probably did it for a couple years, like around the seven to nine age. And you know, I like to think I was pretty good, <laughs> but we look back, and I, I think I either, I think I either won or crashed. And that was just because yeah. I didn't no, know. She could there was no in between. Those fast time laps, real good. Well, I didn't know how to use the the brake. So yeah. I would just, I would just down. drive. So if I got out in front, I'd be good. I tell people all but the time, like when she would go out there, it, it, just her, you could hear her screaming the whole time <laughs> that she was driving. And like, I swear she would shut her eyes and just scream. And we'd be I like, I probably did. I probably had my eyes. I, I feel like that's what I would do. I'm <laughs> sure. I, I hope I make a 
made this turn. I remember getting hit one time and like knowing I was going to flip over. So I automatically just closed my eyes and I, I remember opening my eyes and I was upside down. I was like, where, what happened? I had no idea. Yeah. So yeah. that was probably when they were like, so you, you did it for two years? Yeah, wow. probably a couple years. Yeah. Um, you did it till you were two pretty. more than us. Yeah. Two more yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I got asked to move up to where like Ryan was racing and all those the big boys yeah. I said and I was like, mm, no. But really. you got asked yeah. to move up. So yeah. Yeah. You know, I think I think the weight limit was um, <laughs> her, like she was out of that weight limit and she, her next class was going to be the class Ryan was in. And so they were like, you either, that you was either like, have to do you it. You either have to race in Ryan's class or, or quit. we might have to quit because <laughs> um, and she was like, no, thank you. Yes, so I said no, thank you. I was lucky because I started older. So I was always in the you know, it's all about weight with those quarter midgets. So I was always in the heavier classes, and so I never went that fast. And so, but yeah, yeah we Dad you know, gave us all equal opportunity to see if we liked he it, did. and he, and I raced for four. I mean, until you were sixteen, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. So he's very always good. Time. very quiet too. Your dad, like he, I, I know he's not with you guys, oh, yeah. but like personality yeah. wise, I feel like Ryan kind of has that a little bit too. Yeah. yeah. But you guys are just so. Is that mom? the personality comes out? I don't, I don't know. I think it's, maybe it's being around quiet so much and then like, <laughs> when you're free, you're like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. it's like, I always say like, I went to a small like private Catholic high school and then I went to college and I was like, whoa, yeah. wow. You know, like I feel like that, yeah. but I don't know. We've always kind of been loud and rowdy and you know, Ryan's actually kind of loud and rowdy he once he gets going. Get yeah. yeah. Um, and same with my mom and dad. Like you, you have to see them in their mm -hmm. rare, like rowdy time, but yeah, Dad, he always has been just calm, cool. He is. To himself. To himself, and That's how yeah. Mom always is, too. And my mom is just, too. Um, everything said is just kind of to themselves first, and then yeah. if they have to get involved, they will. Trust me, they will. But um, at first, yeah, everyone's just kind of very mm -hmm. level-headed, which is very cool. Well, yeah. you said, too, your mom, everything's written on her face. Because oh, yeah. before we started filming, I said that in Pocono, <laughs> I saw Ryan in a pair of shorts um, <laughs> because they were out playing football or something yeah. and we had Brex out there and I was like, what's on your leg? And then I was like a big mom mm -hmm. across yeah. me and like a Star Wars yep. and mm -hmm. everything else and oh, yeah. you want to tell everybody your mom? Yeah, on. she just, you know, my mom is very, and I feel like I'm the same way. My face, um, says it I all. just can't, yeah, I, could, I can't shake it out. but. You know, Ryan was really proud of, he has mom and a heart on his leg. Which is super it's sweet. It's super sweet. Super and he sweet. did it for mom and yep. it was like, a very it painful. Day no, it just day? was, nope, it just was. I think it has some some symbolic meaning to where it's about, he was like, told this story about how way back when, if you kneel, that's like who you're, whatever's on your knee, it's because you're kneeling and so it's who you respect most or something. He told us that story. I know We're like, Rex okay. tattoos me on I know. Too. I yeah. Know. So that I'm made waiting, it a little Rex. more kind of symbolic, but but yeah, he showed mom. We were at Charlotte, and he yeah. he pulled it up, and mom was like, mm -hmm. I think she took like tried to scrape it off, and she was like, <laughs> <laughs> she was like, is that real? And he was like, yeah. Do you like it? And she was like, mm hmm. <laughs> you know, and she did, but and she does. She loves it. I feel like she was really shocked to see yeah. it because I, I think she thought that's actually really really sweet because Ryan has yeah. he has a couple tattoos on his body that are for my dad and grandpa and so I think she was like really she likes yeah. mom have any tattoos no okay mom really? and dad are nope no I don't know where we got it from what sibling has the most Ryan um Ryan and I probably have the same amount his are just extremely Bigger. large yeah. mine are all you know I have a couple around Dainty. that are very small and yeah but Ryan he just Likes the murals. He likes, likes the murals. murals. Yeah, like he, he, it's a day project for him. Yeah, so before y'all leave, you want to swap ah, color yes. cards? Okay. okay. So have, we're going to play Never Have oh, I Ever okay, love this. Sibling Edition. All right, so first one, Never Have I Ever Stolen from My Sibling or Borrowed Something Without Us. Oh. <laughs> yeah, all the, yeah. I mean, that's typical. All the time. All, all right. right. Are you like taking the do. 100%. Uh, second one, have you ever snooped through their stuff? Uh, Constantly, still do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my brother's seven years younger than me. Like, yeah. I'm an only. This oh, is yeah. Not, I think yeah, I did always. that yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I do it all the time. I love when Ryan's phone kind of lights up, and I just take a look. Like, who are you talking to? <laughs> <laughs> so next, uh, never have I ever pulled a prank on a sibling. Um, hmm. I know, like the hmm. pranks I'm thinking, like not probably not a good prank. I have. Okay, I'll do both. <laughs> I have talked Ryan and Aaron into running away with. <laughs> when I was really mad at my mom when I was like 15 and I said pack your bags like we're leaving 
And so Ryan packed um, Swiss cake rolls. I don't think Ryan came. Ryan was too good of a kid to come. I came. He no, he, food he, food he did. Yeah, come? they packed food. We went to the end of our driveway. <laughs> we went to the yard. I, yeah, and then they <laughs> stayed and were like, we're not going with you. And I walked down the street. And then, <laughs> and then my, my parents were like, okay, fine, go. And um, about an hour later, I see my mom on the dirt bike, like going up the driveway and out the road. And I'm like, we're here, but bye. <laughs> yeah. We didn't know. Like, we didn't know. Know. I was like, that's anywhere. actually funny. Yeah, Ryan was actually very, like, good boy. Like, didn't do anything. <laughs> like, if I would get in trouble, he would look at, you know, if mom was yelling at me, he would look at me and be like, just apologize. Like, you, know, just, you know, just say sorry and get it over with. And Because I always had to argue. And yeah, mm -hmm. he was always oh, like, he was, yeah, 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 right, yeah. He, was, he like, was always just like, if you just say sorry, we, we would probably be fine. Yeah, or so. if he got in trouble, he would be like, you're crying. crying. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Even if he didn't do it, he would just apologize so, so we could move on. <laughs> This next one, I only have a little brother, so I think it's kind of... This kinda... is not weird for me at all. Okay, I, if, okay. <laughs> Let me ask this. Have you guys... This I wouldn't find weird because they're sisters. Have you guys ever used each other's toothbrushes? Okay. Have yes. you ever used Ryan's toothbrush? No. No. See? Never. No. See? When you have a brother because they're, like, gross and they're he, boys. Um, and I'm like... Yeah. He... Yeah. No. I... See? It's, this I'm is not weird, weird. But like, sometimes I don't even use the same bathroom as it. Like, I don't know what you do in that bathroom. See, I so. think that's different. I don't know why I feel more yeah. sanitary about a toothbrush than a toilet. Oh, I, oh, yeah. I use a toilet. Toothbrush, I, I... No, toothbrush, I can't. Yeah. I could never use my little His brother's habits toothbrush. That he is. Yeah, I, th become. I would use everything else. Like, I, I feel like I've used Ryan's deodorant. Yep. Shampoo, his, conditioner. His brush. Well, the motor he has dry shampoo, so we use that. After he won the race. Of course he does. Braxton's yeah. like, wow, Mom, he's got great really? hair. He, <laughs> he got yeah. mad at us one time because... He, we didn't bring dry shampoo to the racetrack or something. He's like, girls, you don't have dry shampoo? Yeah. And we're like, he was like, I need it. Yeah. It's nice. It's nice going in the <laughs> motor like, What kind of girls are you? With a full thing of, you know, shampoo Yeah, and you have everything there. Whereas wow. before, it's it used to hair. just be, you know, the like typical. The one that The one every, yeah, yeah, yeah. the like, one. I can't use this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like eight and one. So now he's got to take care of that I hair. And I've never one. gotten caught sneaking out. I don't think I ever sneaked out. I, I never what? snuck out. What? I did. Yeah, I never snuck out. I I snuck in. Is that yeah, wrong? yeah. I am. Yeah. Um, my mom was actually very. If you just tell me the truth, we're gonna be good. Mm. And if I would have just done that, I would have mm. been probably better off. But I don't. So when we were in high school, we lived in a house, and it was really far off the main road, super long driveway. Yeah. So sneaking out and like the lights, if you walked with like, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and the gate. There's a gate up there, so you'd have mm -hmm. to open it, or you'd have to like clock. And so sneaking out of our house wasn't. An I've option. snuck out of other people's houses before. I don't think I've ever snuck out of wow. our parents' house though. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming you've snuck out there right at the lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, never with my mom. My mm -hmm. parents are divorced, but my dad. Uh, so my bathroom. This was really dumb that he put me in this <laughs> room. Anyways, the bathroom had like a column outside of the window that I literally just had mm -hmm. to like wrap right. around. The yeah, and go down. Slap yeah. the column. <laughs> So it was like so easy. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. I could sneak around the back porch. I left. I got in trouble one night, uh, and we went to Waffle House. I was like, I didn't even get I in trouble. I didn't do anything yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I went to Waffle House. <laughs> well, thank you guys again for coming in. That was great. And up next, guys, we have Sam's picks. All right, so up next on my picks, I like to tell you some of my favorite places to go around the track in case you're looking for something else to do on the weekend. Um, as always, I like to focus on the kids' stuff. Mm -hmm. There's, again, a Legoland and a Sea Life right in Grapevine Mill. Also, a really great Neiman's Last Call. So oh, yeah. Yeah, kind of win-win for Brex and I. Um, but what I really like, too, and thank you so much, Texas Motor Speedway, they are one of the only tracks that they have a taco stand inside mm, the track. Torchies. And mm -hmm. and they leave you at your bus this little like menu thing you could fill <gasps> out and you get tacos to your motorhome. It's like the coolest thing ever. Well, bravo to that. Torchies is actually know. really good too. It's not like mediocre taco no, they're tacos. They're really really good. Yeah, they're so really good. We love mm, love going to Texas. I mean, Texas is just always fun. Everything's bigger in Texas. Yeah, no, that's true. Go to the stockyards. Texas, there? yes, Texas is one of my favorites. It's called Sam's Fix, but I'm gonna throw yeah, in one of mine anyways. Uh, my favorite barbecue that I've ever had is at the Pecan Lodge in downtown Dallas. It is so good. Uh, they have macaroni and cheese. They put like the barbecue on top of the mac and cheese. Wow. It's 
the best I've I ever mean, had. I mean, you can't go wrong in Texas with food. Also, mm-hmm. I've been told that somewhere in the stockyards, there is this like taco truck that's cash only, mm. and it's supposed to be phenomenal. And then somebody also told me that there's like this restaurant, and you walk through, and there's just all these different meats, and you kind of like pick what you want and then they bring you all the sides yeah so we will find that name for you guys we will. We will. Um, we'll tweet it out but yeah texas is always really fun we're looking forward to it and sam and i always have big hair and big personalities too so i feel like texas is like yes. the perfect perfect place again for us to go. the only reason my hair is up is because i washed it on saturday because i thought we were working on monday but um our producers are also telling us heart eight barbecue is a spot that's too. where you pick out the meat oh, that's where you pick out the meat yes okay. and everybody loves it so make sure to check it out and um also too if you guys feel free to send us some of your picks mm-hmm. so that we could share with other fans what you guys love at the tracks um next up we have question corner which is where fans asked us questions uh, via our social media <laughs> so much for using hashtag ask Alex and Sam or hashtag the infield and so we rounded up some of your questions so mm-hmm. number one is what is your best quick hair and makeup tip hmm I don't know if I have a hair tip other than like learn how to perfect like a messy ponytail dry shampoo yep is a good quick hair tip mine's the top knot this yeah, took me about 30 seconds I, I washed my hair one two four days ago Mm. so this is my go-to and then my other thing is when I don't feel like getting ready I feel like as long as you have black eyeliner and lipstick on you look put together I also am really big on bronzer so like even if you just like touch up a couple of spots put some under eye concealer you got to go with bronzer otherwise you look like a ghost so just throw your bronzer on there Uh, next up how hard is it to watch the races in the playoffs see it's funny in the beginning ones since Kyle had so many points you were like okay you know, mm-hmm. there's 16 of them. You feel all right. But now, now when it's down to eight and we're going to four, I felt like every lap in Martinsville was just tense. Every time he got near somebody, every restart, just kind of like held my breath. Yeah. So. Yeah. How do you manage your schedule and balance your life? Uh, if it looks like I do, I'm faking it really well because I don't balance anything. I just kind of go with the flow and try to accomplish what I need to accomplish in a day. I am a a to-do list girl, not Mm -hmm. on my phone. I need old school pen and paper. And if it's on my list, it makes me so happy to like cross it off. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. that's how I kind of stay organized. All right. Well, what do we eat the night before a race? Everything. Everything. (laughs) We're not getting in the car. So we can really eat whatever we want to eat. I will say though, I never test out a new recipe on Kyle the night before or the day of a race. Hmm. What does he eat the night before a race? Oh, I mean anything, but yeah. I cook everything, but like, you know, I love Italian. I love Carbs. Mexican. Um, yeah, I do. And I try to do stuff that has like potassium in mm-hmm. it and stuff, but yeah, I never, I'm like, oh, let me experiment and try this, you know, the night before a race. McDonald's, Taco Bell, and Chick-fil-A <laughs> is what I eat the night before a race. Well, thank you guys so much again for all these great questions. Continue to ask us things with hashtag Ask Alex and Sam and hashtag the infield. All right. Our final segment is going to be Victory Lane. <laughs> Victory Lane is our winner of the week. Sam and I get to choose it. It's our own personal winner of the week. And uh, we've had some good ones, but this might be our best (laughs) one. This one's great. Um, This is Jimmy's new dog, Charlie Meatball Johnson. And uh, Charlie has a hard card. Charlie has a hard card. Jimmy posted this on all the social media channels. And uh, first of all, the picture is better than my picture on my hard card. <laughs> Mine's still from, I think, the first year I was in the sport, so I kind of agree with that. Mine was taken upstairs. It's like one of those awkward, like, stand in front of a white wall and take your photo. Oh, like a passport yeah. photo. Yes, essentially. All right, well, we have all this action coming up this weekend. We're not done with the playoffs yet. We're just now getting started into the round of eight. It's Texas Motor Speedway, Sunday, 3 p.m. on NBCSN. Hopefully, uh, we can steer clear of some drama but have some good racing. I'm hoping that the next one we film, I'm coming in with a cowboy hat from Victory Lane. That is my goal. You better come in with a cowboy hat. Thank you guys so much again for tuning in. Um, Again, use hashtag AskAlexAndSam and hashtag the infield to ask us any questions or comment on more of what you'd like to see on the show. So, Episode six. Got it. Woo, done. Bye, guys.